I'm Joe from Tribal Art Films and this is part 6 of this tutorial series on a beginner's guide to kinetic typography in Fusion. In this tutorial we'll be looking at speed and break kinetic animation which is the animation of the position parameter. Basically we want our text to fly in and then break into its final typography. So let's, let's have a look at how to do that. Um, before we start, you can see we've already created a background and in our text we've already enabled motion blur. I'm going to take that off just to improve on rendering times and we'll add it on later after we've finished. So let's begin. What we do, as always, we go and we create our follower modifier. And in the follower modifier, we're going to go to our shading elements and we're going to animate from the shading elements. In the follower modifier we do have the text parameter, transform parameter and the shading parameters but we don't have the parameters for movement on the X and Y axis. If we go back to our tools inspector you can see that there is a parameter called layout and the follower modifier doesn't have this layout modifier doesn't have this layout parameter, sorry. It only has this parameter, the transform, the shading, and the text modifier. So it's kind of hard to animate the, the movement on the x-axis with the follower modifier because it's not in that modifier. So we're going to have to shortcut, shortcut this animation of moving from the x-axis using the shading shading element and if we go into our shading element modifier there is a position position parameter here and this position parameter is not really designed to change the position of the text it's more so designed to change the position of the shading elements so for example if I go back to tools and I go to shading elements and the first element is obviously this solid yellow color there but let's say the second element is the red outline and I'll enable that you can see there's a red outline here and if you go to the position and offset it we can change the offset of that outline so this position parameter is not used specifically for changing the position of the text it's more so changing the position of the shading element and it's a bit weird because when we go into our follower modifier we find let me just disable that shading element first we find when we go into our follower modifier that we don't have a layout parameter to move the text which means we can't ripple that movement of the text across our other characters we are gonna instead use this shading element to move our text and ripple it across since that's the only way we can use it so let's have a look at how we can do this what we're gonna do is go to a start of our keyframe and we're gonna go into this position here we're going to enable the keyframe. Now watch what happens when I enable the keyframe. It creates a path here. Just ignore that. We're just going to go back to the follower. That's a whole nother tutorial on that one. So just bear with me here. We'll go back to the follower here. Modify and back to the position. We're going to adjust the position of this shader, which is the solid yellow here and we're going to say that our start of the animation we want to start it at the side here and then after one second let's go 24 frames 
we will bring it back to zero. Okay, that was easy. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Okay, cool. So we've got a movement there from the left to the right. Let's now just delay that using the timing parameter under the follower modifier. Let's have a look what that looks like. Okay, so each of those words are coming in from the right of screen to the center. Let's increase the speed a bit, the delay. Let's reduce the delay, I mean. Let's have a look at that. Let's reduce it even more. And also, what we're going to do is we might even... Let's click on the keyframe modifier, keyframe editor, I mean. And let's adjust the keyframe of our animation to make it a little bit more faster. Let's have a look at that. Okay, yeah, that looks good. So that's our speed element there. What I want to do now is add a shear to that. We want to shear the text so that it's moving fast. And what shearing does is, let me show you, if I click on this keyframe, shearing will change this, it will slant, it will slant the text. And what we want to do is we want to slant the text from this point here to when it comes to its final position to spring into the final position like that. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to use the interpolation curves to do that. Before we do that though, let's just finalize our curve, our speed curve here, because I think it's a little bit too linear. So what I've always said, if we want to adjust the interpolation of that speed, we go into our spline editor. And what I'll do is enable that here. This is our offset here. Okay, now this is the keyframes. Now these are locked keyframes. I'm not going to go into this, but for now, just ignore that. It's just just think that of these as keyframes. And what I'm going to do is improve the ease, the interpolation of this. And what I'll do is I'll do a, you know what? I'll just smoothen it out like that. Let's have a look at that. I might even smoothen it out even more. Maybe we'll just ease it in a bit, ease it in, and just increase that. Let's have a look. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now we've got our speed interpolation sorted on our displacement here on the shader. Let's now get that slant, that shear happening. And we'll add that break as well by using the shear parameters. So at the start, frame zero. I'm just going to go, I'm just going to have a look at it first. Let's just keyframe this in. I want the shear to be, yeah, like that. And I want it to start at frame zero so click on that keyframe hold shift and move it across and you can see I'll go to frame zero that's good and then we can see that this interpolation it slows down up here so we'll change the slant to normal when it stops the shear I mean so the shear will come back to zero once it's at its final position so if we have a look yep now we want to add a bit more interpolation between those two we want to add a bit more smoothness with it so let's add a smooth effect we want to have a break effect so 
as we stop we still have that inertia of moving to the left of the screen but we will have that spring effect from left to right we'll have that spring effect to do that remember our curves that I created in the first tutorial let me just go to let me just go to the first one yep I'm gonna copy that curve here because it has that spring effect copy points I'm gonna go back to our speed, speed and brake and what I'll do is I'm going to remove this for now and I'll just paste it in here paste points okay it's pasted it in let's have a look at what it does okay we just gotta adjust it a bit better now so what we'll do is we'll unselect everything Let's go straight to our shearing tools modifier. Let's look at the shear values here. Okay, so we're starting off. Yep. And what we'll do is just bring these values down a bit. So. I'll bring these values down a bit. Select these two and it will move this down. Yep. So, okay, you can see there's that inertia there. Okay. It's looking good already. Speed and brake. Let's add a look at our displacement because we want to time it well with our displacement. It looks about right. We want to just change that value. Uh, we want to just move it across a bit because it occurs just as we. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at that now. Okay, I might increase the animation just to have a bit more inertia effect even a bit more I reckon good okay let's have a look now just bring this loop in increase the loop Okay, now the ending point, I want it to be ending at zero, so I'll change this to this value to, um, I'll change it to zero. Now it's important when you do your speed and brake, you can see the displacement of the uh, movement and you can see the displacement of the shearing and we want to, we want to time them well so that it moves seamless, seamlessly to create that break effect. Let's have a look at this. Oh, quite happy with that. And let's put our motion blur back onto our text. Here. And let's play that. Loop that again. Okay, guys. And that is how we do our speed and brake animation using both the position parameter and the shear parameter. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit the like button. Also, subscribe and hit the bell notifications as more tutorials will be released in the upcoming weeks thank you and in the next tutorial we're going to be looking at the flip and erect kinetic animation which is the animation of the rotation parameters okay guys have a good one see ya